Hello everybody. I'm very happy to be here today talking to you about my work, the work that I love to do, that is write books. And a big big thanks to Shyamla and Kahani Tatbak for featuring me on this wonderful page where one can discover so much about writing for children. Now the question people often ask me is how did you become a writer? and it's hard for me to explain exactly how but uh, all i can say is that i have always been very fond of reading and i feel the credit goes to my parents because from a very young age my parents used to read out to me my, my both my mother and my father my father was a very busy doctor but on a sunday he would make me sit on his lap and he would read out the comic strips from the illustrated weekly and i thoroughly enjoyed you know the the antics of brer rabbit and was really intrigued by the phantom that mysterious figure so this was my first uh, you know a, 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 a entry into the world of books and later on um, my father would order a lot of books for us you see um, we lived in a very small town almora in uttarakhand and there were no bookstores there but uh, there were people around us who had pretty decent collections of books and uh, definitely i you know i'm very grateful to them because i had access of book to books through people like my aunt my tai ji who had a very nice collection of children's books classics like the you know the little women series what katie did and a really nicely illustrated gulliver's travels then uh, there was also a municipal library and that i'm sure people find very surprising that there was a decently stocked municipal library in our town we had to walk down it was a decent walk about 2 2 miles but uh, that's the way we went everywhere <laughs> there were no other forms of conveyance than our own two legs we always enjoyed the walk then when i was 7 i went to body school and there was an excellent library in our school though our reading was strictly supervised but you know at that time uh, we were not as fortunate as children are today to have a vast variety of books and authors to choose from what we read was enid blyton enid blyton and more enid blyton and maybe some other authors like angela brazil who who stories are really liked and then uh, elena brindire and also uh, the billy bunter stories <laughs> and The, uh, the character whom i really enjoyed william my older sister introduced me to the william books and we had a lot of laughs reading them together sometime so that was how i became a reader and i guess if you're an avid reader there's always some point in time when you are impelled to write your own stories and in my college days i did i did write some short stories not children's stories but uh, being a very laid back person i didn't make a serious attempt to publish them now uh, children often ask me when i visit schools uh, was it your childhood ambition to become a writer and i say no i i was not very sure what i wanted to be- become in my later teens i did nurture ambitions of becoming a journalist but it just so happened that i lost my father when i was in my fa- ma final and uh, after that uh, it became necessary for me to look for a job and i decided to take up a teaching job i applied for a lecturer's post in uh, delhi university college and i got the job and uh, that's what i was doing for over 3 years i taught english and then i got married and uh, 
when my oldest daughter was born, I think I was not really crazy about that job. So I had a good excuse to withdraw and just stay at home, taking care of uh, my children, my three daughters. But the fact was, I was just very restless. And I really wanted to get back, you know, to work somewhere. I don't. I was not sure whether I wanted to go back to teaching. And then after a lot of soul searching and trying out a few things that just didn't work out, I, it struck me <clears throat> that since I had been good at writing, I used to get prizes for essay, essays, etc., etc. Maybe I can try my hand at freelancing. That would mean that I could work from home which was important at that time. So I sat down and I wrote a humorous piece about our dog, our old dog. And I sent it off to the Hindustan Times. And at that time, uh, newspapers used to publish middles. And uh, I really enjoyed reading middles, you know, little uh, pieces on everyday life, reflective pieces. And as luck would have it, it was published. So this was a real boost for me and it motivated me to write more such pieces and uh, I was always looking out for, you know, opportunities to publish. And some of my pieces were published, many came back, but I just kept going because uh, this is, I realized this was something I really enjoyed doing. And uh, at that time in the mid 80s, uh, I used to subscribe to this magazine, this wonderful magazine for children, Target. And uh, as I was reading reading it, you know, I was always a person who crazy about reading, always running out of reading matter. So I was it struck me that maybe I could also try contributing to this magazine. And I sat down and wrote a story for children, which I must confess was not accepted. It was sent back. But the amazing thing was the rejection letter I received. That was the best rejection letter maybe that I've received till now. Uh, the editor, the then editor, Rosalind Wilson, she told me she could not use the story, but <clears throat> I should try again. And I did. And my third story was published in Target. And I felt that this is... Uh, you know, a genre of writing that I enjoyed, especially because my children were quite young at that time. Then uh, at the same time, uh, I really wanted to, you know, get a book published, write a book and see, you know, have, hold a book that I had written in my hands. And I became aware uh, of the, the, the Children's Book Trust competition for writers. Children's Book Trust was the only major publisher of children's books at that time. And I, and they announced a theme for that year's competition. And it was portraying girls and boys as equals. And this is the book that I had sent, the manuscript that I sent, Ashok's New Friends. Well, uh, I didn't get a prize in the competition, but the book was taken for publication. And a few years later, it received the NCRT National Award for Children's Literature. So this was a milestone for me. Though, you know, I continue to freelance for newspapers and magazines, right, till, you know, almost 2000. But I mentioned earlier that I used to read a lot of Enid Blyton. So the next book I wrote was a mystery story and where is it I must show it to you yeah here it is a capital adventure this again I sent to the children's book trust uh, competition and it received the second prize I'm sorry I think the it's the lettering is coming inverted so you have to guess at the guess at the it's a capital adventure. Now, the capital adventure 
And then another mystery story, which I wrote for another publisher with whom I'm still associated, Ratna Sagar. And uh, I, I wrote a mystery story for them too. And the book in the corner, the, the red book, it's titled Three Days to Disaster. So this was the third book I wrote. And all three books came out in 1990. So that was a good year for me, <laughs> the books were concerned. And after that, I continued to write picture books and mystery stories. And this is another mystery story of mine, which has been very well received. It was reprinted several times. The Hilltop Mystery. It was published by Madhuvan Books, uh, the imprint of Vikas Publishers. And uh, in between, I was writing... Uh, picture book stories also and here's a story the walking tree this is a hindi translation of another book called the toy story which is still popular you know the children's book trust titles are reprinted over and over again and they go into thousands so and also you know translated into different language so it's very delightful to know that so many children have been reading your books and uh, in fact, very recently, I did a storytelling session on the toy horse. And the theme was kindness. So it's a story about kindness. And also in the 90s, I wrote this series of picture books. Lippo goes to a party. Lippo goes to the park. And... Squiggly goes to school, Bamba and Pinky. Uh, the funny thing was that uh, this story was inspired <clears throat> by, a, uh, you know, a pet, uh, not a pet, a stuffed toy my daughter had. My daughter's nickname was Bamba at the time and she had a pink panther stuffed toy. So since I had to write an animal story, I was trying to think of the characters and I said, why not Bamba? And I made Bamba into a bear. She hasn't complained, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> so this uh, set of books are still in print, still circulating very widely. And often when I go to schools, when I show these books to the children, they say, oh, we've read it. And uh, sometimes I get calls or messages from parents searching for these books asking me where to buy them and I really enjoyed writing them because they're most of them uh, you know humorous little stories uh, now uh, around uh, you know when I was writing for uh, Target magazine I had written a long short story for the annual number titled Caravan to Tibet and uh, it was a story that was based or I should say inspired by my family history and many years later, uh, I sent it to an American magazine for titled Cricket. It's a very widely circulated and well-regarded magazine in the U.S. So Caravan to Tibet was published again in three parts. And uh, in fact, I have uh, contributed many folk tales to that magazine too, which I'll talk about later. So then I got the bright idea of uh, converting caravan to Tibet into a full-length adventure story because that's what it was. It was an adventure story. It was a, about a journey to Tibet, a very dangerous and eventful journey. And uh, it took me many years, a lot of research, and finally Puffin uh, accepted it for publication. And I was absolutely delighted because it was a story close to my heart and later uh, much later in 2008 it was placed on the ab honor list by the association of writers and illustrators for children of which i have I've been a member and i've been a i used to be a very active member but i'm still associated and they, i was very thankful that they put it on the ab honor list Okay, I was writing other kinds of stuff too, 
and uh, you know growing up in the hills you people are you know are very scared of ghosts and ghosts are very real to them and i heard a lot of ghost stories as a child from my say my you know various people my aya my you know other hell or even uh, you know neighbors etc at that time i wrote some ghost stories i don't have a copy of that book anymore it, it was like a ghost everywhere and then i wrote this other story traveler's ghost which is sadly out of print but uh, i really enjoyed writing this story and i'm hoping that some time some other publisher might take it up again and here's another mystery story of mine uh the hunt for the miracle herb which is unfortunately also out of print okay now i do very sad kinds of writing i dabble in various genres as you can see all my books are arranged you know around me and uh i after caravan to tibet i did a translation of the famous hindi novel chandrakanta chandrakanta was a really exciting book it was a cult novel and the first modern hindi novel and a fantastic suspense story so i was asked to translate this for the puffin classic series and uh, i have been translating earlier <clears throat> from hindi into english stories for adults and the novel as well and uh, this was an absolutely delightful experience because it's an amazing story and you think about it uh, how you know the whole story is constructed it's a masterpiece of suspense so if you're looking for classic literature do pick up chandrakanta you will enjoy it now i have mentioned that uh, my first story is about portraying boys and girls as equals so gender is a theme that crops up often in my books and i had a collection of stories published uh, around 2000 and 2004 not just girls these were some of them were you know old stories which had already appeared in magazines and some i had written freshly for this collection and these were all uh, stories of girl empowerment and this book was used as reader for many years in some schools till it went out of print and uh, again that's an author's tragedy when a book goes out of print but uh, recently i'm happy to say i had another similar book published by ratna sagar go girl go so these are new stories and for a slightly older age group uh, than not just girls and this book also is being used as a supplementary reader and i hope many girls are you know receiving uh, motivation and are being empowered by stories that show that girls can do practically anything in the world talking of girl power uh, i also wrote a, a, a fantasy story the game of shadows you know you see the books on top of me the, the third story it's about a girl who goes uh, out to look for her missing parents who were abducted by this evil uh, creature this evil uh, fantasy character the king of shadows and imprisoned in his world shadowland this was one of my earliest books for scholastic after that i have written many books for scholastic including a book on writing which um, i don't have a copy of now, right now but the, uh, it's titled right right and it's gone into several reprints because uh, it's a guide to writing basically because uh, you know after all these years of struggling and discover, discovering by trial and error i felt i was in a position to guide others so that's another book i've run out of copies and i hear it's being reprinted for i don't know <laughs> maybe the 10th or 12th time and also i wrote two biographies 
for Puffin in the Puffin Live series. Uh, one is Rani Lakshmi Bai, and it seems almost serendipitous because once I picked up uh, Mahashweta Devi, it's a translation basically of um, Mahashweta Devi's wonderful biography, The Queen of Jhansi, and I thought I would like to write about the Rani of Jhansi sometime, and it just so often starting the series. So I got the opportunity to write this, and subsequently Chanakya, another fascinating character from history. And I'm very happy to hear that these books are in great demand. And just recently, I did a session of them in a you know school children's literature festival in Gurgaon. Well, you can see that I write in many different genres, and I've been doing a lot of retold also. So uh, among my new books are two retold the collections of retold stories one is the scholastic book of hindu gods and goddesses and uh, the other is my very new book fact folk tales you can carry around and uh, this is this is just come out just this month so we have so many 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 wonderful stories in our you know tradition and uh, i really love to read them and also retell them whenever there was a demand i've also done the folk tales of uttarakhand my home state and published by children's book trust and these are very different and, and almost unknown from in other parts of the country I've interspersed them with rhymes, you know the way folk tales are sometimes told. So, friends, these are some of my books. I don't want to talk too long, but I would also like to mention that I've compiled, edited, and compiled several anthologies, and uh, one of them right at the back is uh, "Hundred Great Poems for Children." I love reading poetry. I like to write poetry, though for some odd reason I don't write too many poems for children. They just don't happen to me. They just don't emerge from my consciousness. <laughs> so that is one book I love doing. Then again, another one, best stories from around the world, which came out last year and has been well received. And uh, <clears throat> before that, I compiled some. Other anthologies, and one book I must mention, which came out last year, and uh, this is another retold book. Those very very popular stories from our tradition, Vikram Vetal stories. When you look at the cover of this book, you know right away who you know which stories these are. And this is based on an actual written version, not the retold versions of Vikram and Vetal, but an actual written version. Of Vikram and Vetal, and writing this, these retelling these stories was a process of discovery for, for me. Because though I had, you know, read uh, Vikram Vetal stories in Chandamam as a child, I had not thought too deeply about them. So I discovered so many meanings in these books, in these stories, I should say. So let's say. Each book is a process of discovery, whether it's your own story or whether it's, you know, something which already existed in our tradition and you are retelling it in your own way. Because, you know, just as readers find different meanings in the stories you've written, meanings which were maybe uh, there, but uh, in your subconscious you are not aware of them. Similarly, you can uh, find fresh meanings in traditional tales and retail them in many different ways. So th these are my books from say beginning to the present. I won't say the end because I'm hoping to write many more books. I'm actually writing more books and uh, well, maybe one day I'll be talking about my latest book to you. So thanks very much for listening.
and uh, this was supposed to be live but uh, it was not working out but i'd be very happy to entertain questions and answer them at a later stage thanks and goodbye and good luck for everything